Let's say that this rope represents a timeline of your existence. Now imagine that this rope continues on and on and on for all eternity, millions of years. The small yellow parts at the starting point of the rope represents your life on Earth, much shorter than the rest of the rope. Which part do you think we should be focusing on? This one? Or the rest? Ecclesiastes 3 verse 11 says, He has set eternity in the human heart. During this lockdown period, we have engaged with a couple of families that have lost loved ones. We have personally buried a friend, and even though we know everybody eventually dies, um, it always seems and feels unnatural and unfair. And the reason is because God created us in His image. He created us for eternity. He placed, as Ecclesiastes 3 says, eternity in our hearts. That's why we have this inborn instinct, this feeling that there must be more than this short time on earth. And the fact is, there is. I love what Rick Warren says about eternity in his book, Purpose Driven Life. This life is not all there is. Life on earth is just the dress rehearsal before the real production. You will spend far more time on the other side of death, in eternity, than you will here. Earth is the staging area, the preschool, the tryout for your life in eternity. It is the practice workout before the actual game, the warm-up lap before the race begins. This life is preparation for the next. At most, you will live a hundred years on Earth but you will spend forever in eternity. You were made to last forever. Many people say that you only have one life, this one life on earth, and you must live it to the full and enjoy it. But that's not true. There's actually two lives, and the second one is actually a bit longer than the first. And the reality is, life on earth gives you many choices, but in eternity, you only have two, heaven or hell. And when we look at the world around us, I would say that if you are far from God, it is time to return to Him because God promises us anyone that comes to Him, He will accept them. Listen to Jesus' promise in John 14, verse 2 to 3. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. This week we celebrated Ascension Day. Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, He gave us this amazing promise in John 14, that He is going to prepare a place, a special place, the Father's house, and not only that, a room for each one who loves Him. The Father's house is the place where we will experience perfect peace and joy. It is also the place where if you are a child of God, you will receive an amazing inheritance. If you are an heir of Christ, you are part of God's family and you are wealthy. You are part of the wealthiest family that exists. And in John 14, Jesus comes and He says, Don't put your, er your, your hope on anything earthly. Don't put your hope on anything that is temporary. Focus on your eternal inheritance that you have as a family member of God. And it is said, your home is where your heart is. And I want to ask you today, where is your heart? Is it in earthly things that's temporary? Or is it in your eternal inheritance, the Father's house? Listen what Paul says in Romans 8 about our suffering here on earth. He says in verse 18, I consider 
that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Here on earth, everything will die from creation to our bodies. But there is a wonderful promise for us as children of God, where He says that there will be a day when He will return and He will come and make everything new. And what a wonderful promise to hold on to. Don't let the devil come and steal that expectation, that excitement from you, because that is what he wants to do. He wants to keep us down. He wants to keep us depressed. But we will not allow that as children of God, because we hold on to this promise and we are excited for the day that God is going to come and make everything new. Read with me what Jesus said in Luke 12, verse 35 to 38 about expecting His return. Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning, as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. The servants who are ready and waiting for his return will be rewarded. I tell you the truth, he himself will seat them, put on an apron and serve them as they sit and eat. He may come in the middle of the night or just before dawn, but whenever He comes, He will reward the servants who are ready. Jesus says we need to be ready for His return. In fact, one third of the Bible speaks about the second coming of Jesus. The Bible says in the last days there will be natural disasters, there will be famines, and there will be fearful events. Could these be the last days? Or a better question may be, are you ready? Being ready means living for eternity by focusing on the words of Jesus and living according to the words of Jesus. And Jesus says, if you live like this, you will be rewarded. In our generation, there's a thinking that, you know, God sees everybody the same. Everybody's a sinner, none, nobody's perfect. So uh, it doesn't really matter how you live. That's not true. Jesus makes it very clear that there will be rewards for those who are committed. So don't conform to the standard of the majority. Don't let uncommitted people talk you out of commitment. Don't let the devil trick you to miss the rewards that Jesus wants to give you in eternity. Revelation 22 verse 20 tells us what we should be praying for right now. Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. What is the best thing that could happen to the world right now? I think a lot of people would say just for the lockdown to end. But the best thing that could happen to the world right now, for you, for me, for our families, is that Jesus would come back. Yes, and I love these words that John uh, reveals to us, the last words of the Bible that says our deepest prayer should be a prayer of eternity, a, a desire that says, come, Lord Jesus, come, come back and take us to the Father's house. When we pray this prayer, it is not a death wish. It is a life wish. It's to see God's glory revealed in our lives. You see, when we focus on eternity, it helps us to not throw away our lives for counterfeit blessings here on earth, for temporary things, temporary rewards that the devil wants to trick us with. It helps us to focus on who we really are in Jesus Christ, that we are family members of God. And we don't become depressed when we have less. We don't become arrogant when we have more because we know who we are. We are children of God and our value, our identity, our purpose is, fo is found in the Father's house that He's preparing for us right now. As we pray, come Lord Jesus, come. Let's live with an eternal focus by doing these three things. Let's celebrate communion every day. So every day in our home, we celebrate communion and we start with a piece of bread or a cracker and we thank God that we can be part of His body, that we can be part of His family and uh, that one day we will go to the Father's house, that His family cannot die, but we will only leave the earth and we will enter the Father's house and receive 
our eternal inheritance. That is something to celebrate every day with your family. We also thank Him for the blood that washes us clean, that He's with us now, because when we are clean, we are close to Him. He's with us. He will never leave us. We receive power because He gives us His Holy Spirit. And when His Spirit is in us, we receive power to grow and become more like Him. And we also receive purpose because we should share His peace and His power. We should share His love as the family of God. The second thing that we can do is we can encourage people with the eternal promises that we have in Scripture. When people around you are going through a tough time, we don't always have the right words to say, and that is okay. All we should do is close our eyes, hug them, and pray with them these promises that we take in faith that we read in the Scriptures, where God gives us hope in times of need. When we pray these promises of Scripture, we declare, that no matter what challenge we face on earth, it's only temporary. But these promises are eternal. And when we declare it, it stirs hope inside of us and the people around us that are going through tough times. The third thing I want to end with today is this. If you feel that you are far from God, Jesus is inviting you back home. Pray this prayer with us today. Loving Lord Jesus, I'm sorry that I have been living for earthly things. I want to be part of your family. I desire these eternal promises you have for me. I give you my heart. Lead me into a life that has eternal value. Amen. Remember, when your family stays busy with Jesus, 
Jesus stays busy with your family.